linear differential equation, I suppose would be identifying it as linear, but you won't have to worry about that on the test. It will be the case where it'll say solve the homogeneous differential equation. So you'll know that's the homogeneous. I can't remember if I said solve the linear differential equation, but by process of elimination, if one of them is the homogeneous and the other one would be the linear. So you have it because the, the third problem is a word problem, which is a Newton's law, so you don't have to you know, guess too much. Right? So uh, in this case, what we want to do is get it into the appropriate form, which means all the y's on the same side. Right. Then we want to rewrite it so that the coefficient of y prime is equal to 1. So that just means divide out whatever the coefficient of y prime is. Right. So we'll have y prime minus 3 over x plus 1 y. Now the right hand side simplifies, right, because it's factorable. So you're looking at just an x plus 1. It's kind of nice. Ultimately what we need out of this is the p of x, which is the coefficient of the y. Right, because the objective behind a linear differential equation is to try to, uh, on the left hand side, manufacture the result of the product rule. Right, so to do that, we rewrite or redefine a new function, mu sub x equals e to the integral of p of x dx. Okay, right, so that's the memorization piece. So we would say, or at least for now, in this course. So we anti-differentiate. In this context, you shouldn't be afraid of a log because you have an exponential, right? So again, this is a rule, and that rule contains an exponential e. So if the result of the integral is a natural log, that's wonderful because that's going to allow some things to cancel out nicely, right? So in this case, we're looking at 3, negative 3, ln of x plus 1. We leave off the plus C until the end, right? So cleaning it up, show the intermediate step, E to the ln X plus one, bah, to the negative third, which in turn becomes just X plus one to the negative third. All right, so that's what's gonna get multiplied through. Right, so each term of this differential equation is going to get multiplied by that. All right. So we can go back and work off of the original differential equation, or I could just rewrite it. Maybe I'll just do that. Y prime minus 3 over x plus 1 y is equal to just an x plus 1. I'm multiplying each term by x plus 1 to the negative third. All right. So it doesn't really change anything for the first term. x plus 1 to the negative third y prime minus 3 x plus 1 times x plus 1, I'm sorry, 3 over x plus 1 times all of this, but this really goes on the bottom, all right? So that's actually going to give you a fourth power. So that's, that's good news, all right? That's one, one avenue for which we can get rid of the absolute values because when you bring it to the bottom and multiply it by the x plus 1, it goes to the fourth power, giving us an even power making it positive. So 3 over x plus 1 raised to the fourth power. y equals, then the other one, 
you know, it is what it is. You're stuck with the absolutes, at least for the, the time being. X plus one to the negative second. All right. So you're not stuck with all the absolutes. You're stuck with the, the first one because on the right-hand side, again, you have a power of two. I kind of missed there. The power of two. Power of two means that whatever is contained within inside is raised to an even power, which means that it has to be a positive result. So that's a license in this regard to get rid of the absolute value there. So that's kind of nice. So slowly but surely, we're getting rid of the absolutes. All right, so then what we want to do is verify that what we have here is in fact the result of the product rule. All right, so first times the derivative of the second. So my first function, the absolute x plus one, negative third, to the negative third power, times the derivative of the second. So the second, if this, this derivative would have to be y, So if this were the product that through its expansion using the product rule became this, then this should be the second function times the derivative of the first. All right, the second function is y. The derivative of the first would be negative three times x plus one to the negative fourth, license to get rid of the absolute value, times the one. All right, so that checks out. So we're in good shape there. All right, so right hand side, still is what it is. I'm gonna leave it in that form rather than making it a fraction because if I make it a fraction, then it's not as user friendly when it comes to integration. Right now, it's, it's ready to rock and roll for a reverse power rule, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna swing my dx over to the other side and then integrate. integrate both sides. Right hand side, I have to do the work, but the left hand side, again, inverse operations, the integral and the d, the, the derivative component are gonna cancel out, so x plus one to the negative third power times y is equal to, now because the inner function here has a derivative equal to one, I can just integrate around it. So increase the exponent by one, divide by the new exponent, so negative x plus one to the negative first plus c. All right, and so, and I go through the remainder of the process, which really doesn't amount to much. I just wanna isolate the y. I'm gonna divide both sides. You know what, let me do it. Instead of division, I'll multiply both sides by the absolute x plus one to the third makes it a, a, just a smidge cleaner. So y would be equal to negative. Now when I multiply the absolute x plus one cubed by this, that goes to x plus one squared, which is an even power so I can drop the absolute, plus c times the absolute x plus one cubed. So we weren't able to get rid of all the absolutes, but we were able to get, get, get rid of a fair few of them. Yeah. And so this would give us a family of functions that represent the solution of the differential equation. Now th this question in its full glory was calling for you to come up with a, a slope field, really. Uh, that, that's beyond what anything I would ask you to do. Right. So really it's just, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of algebra, but really when you think about it, the calculus, again, is just the one step, all right? So, well, okay, well, two steps, because you actually had to apply your rule, but in that rule, you had to do a small integral, nothing too crazy, but then more algebra, and then eventually you had to do another integral, all right? So, yeah, a little bit, a little bit more work, but 
you can kind of see how between this and um, homogeneous, it lends itself to a um, group test rather than an individual one. Um, about the integration of x plus 1 to the negative second power, if inside parentheses is 2x plus 1, you wouldn't be able to do the power rule, right? You would, but you'd have to divide by 2. Okay. So you divide by a derivative on the inside as long as it's a constant. Okay. Otherwise, you have to use uh, uh, u substitution. Um, for the first, like, step where you say, where you do, where you find, like, p of x, um, when I first did it, I left, I just left it, like, x plus 1 times y prime minus 3y, and then just said negative 3 was p of x. Did that, like, also work, or, like, I know it was probably going to be a lot more work than we did here. Yeah, it, so, it, it, still it will, it, you might have to do more algebra okay. along the way, but it, it'll get you there. Okay, so 